Welcome to Quilting with Char. Today I'm going to show you how to make Storm at Sea. This is done with the Peaky and Spike template sets and I can't wait to show you how easy it is to cut and sew this uh, quilt together. But first of all, let's take a look at some different examples that I have to share with you. The first one that you're looking at is the one that I started or made for the show. I used only three blues and two golds. There are different varieties of textures and different amounts of backgrounds in these fabrics and it really is simple and like I said a little later on I'll show you the three units that are used to make up this quilt. It looks like there are curves in the pattern but it really is a combination of angles that are sewn together that create that illusion. The outside border was quilted with waves uh, to, to complement the quilt and then the center part of the quilt what we did was we drew some straight lines from the center of each of the diamonds and that also added we connected from one diamond to the to the next and that added also dimension and complemented the quilt design. Next I'd like to show you some of the quilt blocks that were made in Mallard, Iowa in a class that I was teaching down there. And the gals were so kind to share with me some of their work. When you look at the different quilts hanging on the ladder, you'll see that some of them have three fabrics, some of them have four, and as much as five uh, different fabrics are used. And they all have a different mood, mood uh, to them because of the fabric types that were used. Then when you look over on the main wall, and this is one of the bigger ones that came back from the class, and it's actually turned out to be one of my favorites, I think. I like it because she's taken the time to fussy cut the fish out of the blue fabric and that starts in the center of each of the blocks and then it's surrounded with a soft yellow and then she added like a sea foam color and then accented with a dark purple. It really is an effective quilt and in that one she has used I believe it is four different fabrics to create that design. So you can use any number of fabrics. Uh, when working with this design. On the flannel board off to my left are the three actual combination of pieces sewn together that created this whole quilt. The first one is very simple. It's just a square on point in the center of uh, little triangles. And the next one has, it's not an equilateral triangle, but it's called Peaky. And then it's surrounded by Spike. And I will show you the templates that go with that. And then here again, we have a larger square on point where you start in the center and then keep building the block until you have an eight and a half inch square when this unit is finished. The templates that are used from Peaky and Spike would of course then be the square on point. We have the little small triangle that goes off in the corner. And the template is named, or the set of templates is named after this. There's your Peaky and here's your spike template. Now all of these combinations when sewn together equal the four and a half inch square. Now this one starts out with a four and a half inch square and then you start working your way around it with some more triangles and then here's your largest piece out in here. And this unit when sewn together ends up to be an eight and a half inch unfinished or an eight inch finished square. So you see it is pretty easy to make this quilt. I'm going to show you how to cut a couple of the pieces because so many of them are alike I, I don't feel that it's necessary to cut them all. But what I'm going to show you how to do is to cut the spike, the peaky and the spike shape. And the first thing that I'm going to do is check to see that my fabric is in fact straight and I had done that ahead of time so I don't have to do that again. Then I will lay the template up on top. Now when cutting this shape I want to have my fabric folded in half because I want to have both the right and the left side uh, to go around the center of the block. So I'll first cut the strip of fabric
then sometimes I like to move up onto a small mat board so it makes it easier to work with. And notice how I've bifolded the fabric up on top and now I'll be able to easily turn the board as I'm working. So I'll first remove the salvage edge and then turn the board and that's really important. You don't want to disturb your fabric through the process of cutting because you would lose some of the accuracy. Now here would be your right and your left side that would go on both sides of the peaky shape. And that's and now if I were cutting that, you would just cut a strip to accommodate that. And notice how I wouldn't have any wasted fabric when I cut that because you would just flip flop the template to cut those pieces. Then when cutting the triangles that fit in the corner, for those we'll cut, nope, we'll use this piece I guess. Here's a neat little trick that I'd like to share with you. Sometimes when you get fabric for a quilt you probably have two or three yards and you really don't know how much you want to cut off. So after you've washed and ironed it, just kind of accordion fold it down on your mat board and that way you don't have all that fabric hanging over the edge of your table. So now we can work with this whole big piece of fabric without any problem at all. Again, we'll straighten out that edge. Turn the board again. And then we'll lay one of the triangles, actually they're called half square triangles, up on top of the ruler so that we know exactly how wide to cut that strip. Then we'll just remove that. And then again, I like to move it up onto a small mat board. So that it's easier to work with. It's always a good idea to remove the salvage edge because it's got a tighter weave than the rest of the fabric. And then turn your board it's very, very easy to cut. And notice how we don't have any waste in the fabric. And when I'm cutting for a queen size quilt, I would probably have as many as six layers of fabric. So it goes very fast. Now the reason I cut the triangles like this was so that the bias edge would be on this part of the block and the straight of grain out here. And when I bring you up to the block up here, you see how the straight of grain would then end up out here. And on this bigger piece, it would also end up out in here. Well, that's all I have to share with you on the cutting. And now I think I'd like to take you to the sewing machine and show you how easy it is to put these units together. I have placed some of the pieces down to my left side here for you to uh, follow along as I'm putting them together. And the first unit that I'm going to show you how to do is to make that square on point in the center of the block. Well, it's not always in the center, but it's used in many different parts. These are the units that you would put together. The first that we're going to do is right sides together, put these together, and here to to find out how to place them, all you have to do is lay the square on top of the triangle and just watch to see that you have equal ears on both sides. And then I'll start to sew on a little anchor cloth. And I've got an open toe foot. I like to use that. Um, I know some people don't, but I find that it's so much easier to see where I'm going because I don't have a bridge across the foot. And then I'll just use the stiletto to guide my fabric so that I can sew nice and straight. Okay. 
Now when sewing this seam, you would really wish for that seam to start and end in the crevice, but it just doesn't do that. When you look closely at it, you'll see that there's probably one or two stitches on the blue part of the triangle. And when we start to sew the next sides on, then it will um, start in the crevice. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll finger press that seam open on both sides. I like to finger press. And then I'll take you to the next step over here where we've actually got already the two sides on. The step is the same for both sides, just matching up the ears. Now what I want to do is to connect the side units. Now this time, when I sew these triangles on, this seam will start and it will end in the crevice. And I'll turn it over this to this side. And I have the machine set so that it'll come up into the pivot position. That way it's easier for me to feed the pieces under the machine. Notice how I don't have to go in the back and lift up the presser foot at all. It just comes up automatically. And it will end right in the crevice like I wanted it to. And just like before, you'll take the time to finger press that seam open. Just like that. Now you'll notice that the seam here, when you look closely at this, it is now one quarter of an inch from the edge, from this point to this point. And we'll add one more. Let the presser foot come up so I can easily feed it through. Now when working on a large quilt, I would probably be working on 20 more or more of these units at the same time, so you'd chain sew, and that really saves a lot of time. Okay, now the next part that we'll do is, again, we'll finger press this open. And then I'll take the time to press with the iron. And when you're finger pressing, it's a good idea to press with your finger on a hard surface. That way you don't have any little wells in your seam line. I'll clip that little thread out of there. And we keep the iron close by so that you can just, instead of having to get up every time, you can just grab onto the iron and give it a little press. And again, from the top, and the bottom. Now to see that I have used the right sewing or seam allowance, what I'm going to do is lay the template down on top of those sewn pieces to make sure that I do in fact have a four and a half inch square. And it looks like I have a really nice one. And what I'm going to do now is trim off the little ears that were left over. And just like up at the other board, I was turning the board so it's easier to work my way around. You don't want to disturb the template or the fabric when doing that. And now we have a perfect unit to go into the quilt. The next unit that I'm going to show you how to make is how to attach the peaky and the spike to create this unit right here. Now I have one kind of in progress, so I'll start with that. To start out, you will put the gold onto the triangle. And when doing this one, you want to have a little bit of the blue on top and at the bottom, or at the ear, down in the bottom, that seam starts right in the crevice. I've already sewn that seam, and then we will 
finger press the seam open and then we'll be ready to sew the other side on. Now this time when you put this one on, oops I gotta get the right piece, still had the wrong one, there we go. Remember when I was cutting these pieces how they had to be a mirror image so I would have one for the right and the left? Okay now this time when I connect this seam this will match at the top and we will have an ear at the bottom. The stiletto becomes my pinning. Now, that doesn't mean I never use pins, because I will be a little later on, but I find that I save a lot of time when I use the stiletto. Okay, we'll now have our next unit. We will finger press the seam open, and then we'll give ourselves a test and see if we, in fact, have the right piece. Okay, after you finger press it, then press it with the iron so it lays nice and flat. And then again, you'll lay the template up on top. And this really gives you confidence in your piecing to know that you've actually sewn it just right. Now I sew with a scant quarter inch seam allowance and that's what I recommend in all of your piecing for quilting. That way it makes up for the fabric that's used in the seam line. We'll trim this off and now we have another perfect unit to go into the quilt. Now it's two of these that go together so if I take the time to trim this one off then I can sew those two together. Okay, now we'll put these two right sides together and do like this. Now here we have those unusual angles that we were talking about earlier. And this time I will take the time to pin. So what I'm going to do is insert a pin a fourth of an inch from the edge through the top and the bottom. I'll snug it up and then I'm going to insert another pin at the same angle as the seam. Instead of going straight across, I'll put it in at the same angle as the seam. And we'll do the same over here, right on the seam line. and we'll snug it up and then we'll sew that seam. And then we have completed the second unit that goes into the quilt. Make sure you have the edges matched up. Just before you cross over the pin, pull it out. And there we have the diamond unit that really pulls the whole quilt together. Now this intersection here, oops, when I show this to you, you'll see that this is now one-fourth of an inch from the edge from here to there on both sides. And all I would have left to do then would be to finger press that piece. The hardest part to this point would have been to get this unit sewn together perfectly. And in the book I will show you exactly how to match up those two at this part so you don't have to wait to have a happy accident when putting those together. There is a little trick to it and like I pointed out earlier you have just a little bit of the blue on top 
and then a little bit more of an ear on the bottom. The last unit that I want to talk about in the quilt is actually the larger one, but it starts out the same way as a small square on point. Remember how I started out with putting the triangles on both sides? Here I have pressed the seam open, and again, we've uh, added another one down here. Keep working your way around that square on point in the center until you have completed that whole unit. Now to make it into the larger uh, block that goes into the quilt, which is going to end up to be the eight and a half inch square, we started to add now the bigger triangle along the outside edge. When you add these pieces now to this unit, you want to sew with the pieced part on the top so that you can see exactly the intersection that you want to sew over. That way you'll end up with the perfect points on the right side. And again, you would keep working your way around, adding to the top and the bottom, and then the third side and the last side you would put on, then we'll complete it for the eight and a half inch square. Very, very easy quilt to make. Now, like I said before, I want to turn it over so that the seam that when I'm sewing this seam, this is the intersection that I can see to sew over. So this seam now would start in the crevice and it would end in the crevice and you would sew exactly over this intersection right here to make that perfect point. When you look up at the larger flannel board, I have put the quilt a little farther along. Here are the diamond units connecting to this uh, eight and a half inch square and it just alternates every other one. Then the connecting row that goes between them has the little square on point and again the diamonds. And you just keep repeating that over and over until you have the size quilt you want. Now you can do this in a table runner, pillow tops, all the way up to a queen size quilt. That really is your choice.